Hello and welcome to the Horn One Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, consider signing up for the Patreon. There you get ad-free content, early access, exclusive episodes, and monthly supporter hangouts. You can find it at patreon.com slash the Juan on Juan podcast. If you don't like the subscription-based models, there are other ways of supporting the show that are linked in the description. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Juan on Juan podcast with your host, Juan Ayala. There's also a fine line between what we consider technology and unexplained paranormal activity and magic. And it's always possible that we always had these advanced forms of interacting and manipulating the world around us and in, in, in what we would understand as magic and ways to do this that could just be a, eventually we'll understand it as a form of science or of technology. But you're right. There's stuff that's way older than than anything that we have manufactured in our, our our modern days that our military industrial complex could have ever dreamed up and especially in places like Louisiana when we're especially when you're talking about some of the native history and the voodoo and paranormal history and all of that and to the fact that there is a distinct effort to attempt to cover some of this stuff up be your host i don't even know why i keep saying that but welcome back to another episode make sure to follow the show on social media at the juan on juan podcast on pretty much all platforms tjojp.com for all that good stuff get your comic book occultist monday on there and patreon.com slash the juan on podcast all that good stuff links are in the description if you're listening to us on the rss feed leave a five-star review and if you're watching on youtube or any other video platform Give a thumbs up, share, all that goodness. And today we have Chris Matthew from Forbidden Knowledge News. What's up, bro? It's been a little bit. Hey, Juan. Thank you so much for having me back on. Always a fun conversation. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. And for those that that are interested in finding your work, Chris, where can they go look for Because you have a great channel, great, great podcast as well. Where can they find that? Of course, yeah. You, our website is forbiddenknowledge.news. We've also started live streaming from there and Rumble. Uh, We're on every podcast platform. Our premium content is on Rockfin, and we also have backups on Odyssey. But be sure and check us out on our website. Also, if you want to help us out with our production of the docuseries, you can go to supportfkn.com. Awesome. Send me the links for that. Chris, that I sure. posted in the description. And we were talking about you just recently shot a documentary, and it's something that cryptids, Chris, is one of my guilty pleasures. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm a researcher, but every now and again, I'll slip in an episode of, you know, the confessionals or uncomfortable or, or cryptids of the corn, right, in there just to, to spice it up a little bit. And one of, the, <laughs> one of my favorite cryptids happens to be Dogman. And I know you have some mm, stuff yeah. on the werewolves. I've, I've covered the book of werewolves and I've done a couple episodes on werewolves and I just finished shooting, not shooting, but recording an episode a couple of weeks ago with a researcher from Tennessee who has encountered dog man and people send him reports and, and whatnot. But you were in Louisiana, right? Yes, I was, man. And when it comes to cryptids, I had no idea the vast amount of different types of creatures and cryptids and monsters that are known to frequent those areas. I've heard of 
dogmen in that area growing up. They called it Rugaru. It was more of like a cautionary tale. If you don't brush your teeth or you eat too many sweets or you curse or you have sex before you're married, the Rugaru is going to come eat you in your sleep or something. And it was basically described as a werewolf man. Well, the more I find out that this is based off of real events, real encounters, real lore and history of people that have encountered this creature in the wilderness and swamps of Louisiana. And I went down there to, to start on my docuseries. It's going to be a series of all kinds of stuff that I cover from paranormal to occult, hidden history, spirituality, UFOs, all the good stuff. But I figured why not start in Louisiana since I was born and raised there. I'm going to be traveling across the country to, to get all these wonderful topics. But start in Louisiana, I want to do some occult Louisiana history and paranormal high strangeness that occurs there. And man, I didn't know it. Louisiana is like the Skinwalker Ranch of the South. There is a whole plethora of paranormal <laughs> and high strangeness from just ghosts and, and, and poltergeists and disembodied voices and lights to cryptids and UFOs and all sorts of just amazing high strange stuff. And the deeper I got into my research, the weirder the shit got. And I interviewed some amazing eyewitnesses. I spent time with some. I don't know if you heard of Scott Pace or heard any of his interviews going around. No, it doesn't ring a bell, the name. Well, Scott Pace is just a, a, a a good old boy from Louisiana. He's a very simple man. He's very smart, but he's very, he just, he doesn't find any of that stuff interesting. Not normally. He's a hunter and a fisherman, and he just likes to do his work. He, uh, he works at, I believe, some kind of coffee distributor, and he goes to work, comes home, wants to go hunting and fishing and spend time with his family, and that's about it. He's just your, your normal, everyday citizen. Well... <laughs> He started having some incredible encounters, and he, he just got cracked open one day. It's it all started with him. Like I said, he's a he's a hunter, and he was in a deer stand in the swampy wilderness of Louisiana. And I'm gonna have to get you this dude's info because he's I, I, I gave it to Sam. I just went on Tinfall. I had to talk about it and I gave it the, his info to Sam and a bunch of other shows. And he's been making the rounds. Actually, he's been going talk about these on some, some of the, the bigger uh, paranormal shows. His experiences have been so incredible and it's so believable because he's just, just such a normal dude that had, he doesn't do drugs. He doesn't drink. He's not looking for notoriety. He just wants to talk about these experiences because he needed somebody to talk to at first. And then, you know, more people that heard, the more his stories got around. Well, it started when he was in a deer stand in the swamps and he was hunting deer or whatever he was going to plan on eating or in whatever Louisiana. the do. In Louisiana. This is in South Louisiana. It's about, oh, I'd say 50, 60 miles from New Orleans outside of new orleans in the more wilderness swampy areas and he was uh, he had his pointed his rifle scope out there he's looking out to see what was out there and he said he sees walking towards his area was the largest and tallest and biggest hairiest man he's ever seen in his life he said he had pure black skin and he had like dreadlocked, matted, nasty, swampy looking hair covering his entire body. And he said he panned his rifle scope over to the right and he sees none other than what he can describe as a fucking werewolf man, a dog man standing there completely naked on two legs, elongated snout, hairy, terrifying. Was he packing? Did he say? <laughs> I didn't get there. <laughs> no, I should have asked him though, man. Next time I talk to him, I have to nobody ask ever him mentions like, "Hey, he was packing." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to be interested in that kind of thing to really be looking for that stuff. But he was more scared than anything. He didn't know what the fuck was going on, and he was all of a sudden he hears like voices in his mind. He hears what he calls mind speak, and apparently the Bigfoot is psychically communicating with him, saying. Or well, at first it was the dog man in a very angry voice saying, you better put that gun down or I'm going to come up there and tear you apart. 
And then he hears a different mind speak voice say, no, it's okay. He doesn't have his finger on the trigger. He's not here to harm us. Scott doesn't know what the hell's going on. This is his first time ever experiencing. He's terrified. So he tries to speak back in his mind because that's the only thing he can think to do. And he's like, no, I'm not going to hurt anybody. I was just looking. And the Bigfoot's like, yeah, maybe you better get out of here. So Scott is terrified. He runs down the deer stand and he starts getting going out of that area. And he looks back behind him and he says he sees a couple, like three or four other creatures that are following behind him, seemingly making sure he gets out of there or following him for other nefarious reasons. But he, he saw what he thought was a couple of dogmen and then a couple of Bigfoot that were following him out of this area. Now, after this, it opened up just madness for him, man, just incredible experiences that he, he still has to this day. It started with Bigfoot and dogmen. Then it evolved to these creatures started coming into his house. <laughs> he would it, not necessarily see them at all times. There, there would be things moving around, footprints, indentions in the floor, smells, very bad smells, and he would see what would be shimmers, like, you know, the predator shimmer where you can see kind of the, the outline of something or someone, but it's like invisible, translucent. He'd see that all the time in his house and massive shadows he'd he actually saw what he thought was bigfoot peering in his window the the physical creature so he believes these things have the ability to not only cloak themselves or maybe they have the ability to alter our perception to where we can't see them but they start going in and out of his house he doesn't believe that they mean him any harm he believes that they maybe were curious because he was able to interact with them uh, he's still not sure why they started coming around so much he would start noticing them in the clearing across from his house and he started noticing other creatures uh, some of the most cr creepy sounding creatures i've ever heard of is what he's calls the little forest people now, I don't know if these are like little Bigfoot, but they they seem different. He described them to be much different than just your normal Bigfoot. Although he said he had seen some very strange looking Bigfoot as well, which we'll get to later. There's apparently different varieties and hybridizations of lots of these different creatures out is, there, which is even more creepy. Is the plural of Bigfoot Big Feet? Or how would big you? <laughs> big Fi? <laughs> big Fi. I don't know. Correct That's pronunciation of that. The big feeders, <laughs> right? Like a, 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 a gaggle of big feeders. Or something. I don't know what it is. But. Flock of feet. Yeah, flock of know, feet, man. whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the feeders were out there anyway. So the little forest people, he describes them as no, no taller than four or five foot, covered in black hair and black skin like the Bigfoot. But unlike the Bigfoot, they have incredibly creepy eye shine at night he says at night you can see them all over the swampy areas but their eye shine is what makes them most terrifying is they look like kaleidoscopes and they are they appear to be spinning when you're looking at them like spinning kaleidoscopes in the dark and he's seen these little people with the eye shine spinning and sometimes he says that they can appear to at will turn into smoke or mist and dissipate away and then reform into humanoid forms somewhere else he's seen some of these creatures come out of the ground one of the creepiest accounts of these creatures and a bigfoot together a double whammy is he was at a location where there was one of his, he made friends with a native chief in the area that's claimed to have relationships with these creatures, claim, claim to be able to cyclically communicate and uh, on a regular basis do, does so. He goes out there and maybe uh, has conversations with these things. Well, in a sexual way, by the way, Chris? This That would be incredible, <laughs> man. I think that needs to happen more often, actually. I think Bigfoot needs love, too. Like when you sure. say relations, I mean, I'm just I'm thinking that movie Primal. I think it's called Primal Rage, where I was watching it, and there's a part where the Bigfoot is kind of like, moving back and forth and i'm like what's going on and then it was what i thought it was with with this one of the women in the i was like what in the world like they showed this and there's stories of bigfoot doing stuff to yeah. like horses and cows so i mean again 
I'm just I, I wanna I wanna talk about the occulted aspects of cryptids, Chris, right? The stuff that people don't ask, right? Because he let, does need love too. I'll let's unpack this a little bit. So we have this guy in Louisiana, a regular a regular guy out in the boonies in Louisiana in, in the in the swamps, who encountered first it was a dog man entity encountered and he talked telepathically to it. Yes, dog man and Bigfoot together. They were together? <laughs> they were together. They were within, they were within ten feet of each other, man. This is this is what he claims. Okay, did he did he describe how the voices sounded? Was it raspy? Was it like a he regular? He said the dog man had a raspy, gruff, kind of growling voice in his head. He said the dog man. I mean, the Bigfoot was just like a deeper, baritone type of type of voice that came through in his in his psychic. So they escort him out of the woods. And now they're yeah. showing up at his house, the little gnomes plus the Bigfoot. Or the well, big he didn't. See, he's he doesn't really see what's in his house. He sees like shimmers. He sees the outlines. He sees some shadows. He footsteps, hears sounds. He actually hears the the disembodied voices at times, like they're communicating with him. He out. He can. He has seen Bigfoot peering through his window. Uh, but the little people, I don't know if he's seen in his house. He's definitely seen near his property and on the swamps where he goes hunting in the surrounding areas. Interesting. Okay, so he's had like he has so, sort of. Does he does he refer to it as the hitchhiker effect at all? Like something attached itself yes, to him? Yes. He, he, well, he's definitely he has become a a magnet for paranormal phenomena because it it evolves. It keeps evolving to different types of creatures that somehow become interested in him or or he unlocks something by communicating with them i'm not sure what happens i'm in an ongoing type of interview uh relationship with scott and we're he reports all his weird stuff to me periodically what's happening and it just keeps getting weirder and weirder so, so yeah, yeah. For, for the next time just ask him about if he was packing or not because i'm working That's on right. my own to research and i need to know that so and, I, and i'll talk to you about it here towards the end because i'm working on some stuff i'm gonna ask you about so are we, are we doing bigfoot and dog man porn over there no that no not about? that type okay. of thing but but <laughs> almost close close i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. i got you so all right well, yeah. so he's got these little people these little elementals or something in his house shimmers Dude. what's next well he's like i said he he knows this tribal uh, native tribal chief and I, I don't think I'm not sure if this was in Louisiana he also has a group of friends in Nebraska that he goes visit that or South Dakota one of those states that has similar activity but he was there with this native tribal leader that claims to have relationships and be able to communicate cyclically with some of these weird creatures in that area well he sees what he he says is like a 10 foot tall bigfoot across a meadow he sees it staring at him from behind a tree he's peeking from behind a tree sticking his head out from either side and this particular bigfoot they said they call him stevie wonder because he's constantly like swaying his head like this when they see him and swinging from trees like that he's swinging from the outside to trees to look at people like that so they dubbed this guy stevie wonder well apparently Scott has formed a relationship to where he's like I said earlier, he's a religious man. He goes to church every Sunday. He enjoys reading the Bible. And he once he started having these experiences, he'd go out and he would sing Bible hymns to the creatures and read Bible stories, I guess, to get a feel if they were evil or not. And he claimed that they enjoyed it and and asked him to you know further sing him songs and keep going out there well this one experience where he sees the 10 foot tall bigfoot across a meadow named stevie wonder he's asking him he stevie in, in his mind communicates wants him to sing for him well scott starts singing some kind of gospel or bible hymn and as he's doing this stevie wonder starts doing a stevie wonder thing and he's approving he's like yeah this is good stuff and <laughs> On each, he claims that on each side of this massive Bigfoot creature, two of the small forest people start coming out of the ground like snakes being charmed, I guess in a halfway mist-like form coming out of the ground and dancing to the, the Bible hymn that he was singing, Stevie Wonder, the, the cryptid. So 
these were becoming normal experiences for him. He even had an experience where a Bigfoot, he claims, reached into his truck and tried to gl- grab his cell phone because he was trying to take a picture of it. And he had to like slap it the hand away and tell it no. And it, it just walked away <laughs> like nothing happened, man. So, yeah. And then they've, they, they evolved into weirder shit we can get into too, man. They evolved into what he claims to be extraterrestrial encounters. So I pulled this up because I'm, when I'm thinking of the, the, the moving around, I don't know if you've ever seen Spirited Away. It's one of my favorite movies, but this, no. this, ent- well, watch it, bro. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, this came out in years ago. It's an anime. But it's about, yeah. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but just watch it. And it, it reminded me of this entity when you said the, the moving around like that. So very interesting, very interesting. Now, because one of the things about these open areas, we know that that Louisiana right, has a lot of swamps. Here in Florida, we have a lot of swamps. And there's something about the deserts or these open area, mountain ranges, etc., where the energy is different. Perhaps portals open up. But it seems like this guy has... He's li- living in a movie kind of because he's having all these experiences that people would people go their entire lives. I've never really experienced anything paranormal except for a UFO that I saw recently and that really? I that that I that I knew that I didn't know what I was looking at, but I knew it was something there. Right. And and I was with other people. So, I'm uh, you know, my family was there with me and they saw the same thing I saw. Right. We couldn't and we don't know what we saw. So therefore, it's a. UAP or UFO, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I've been out in the Everglades. It's a weird vibe out there. It's a weird energy. And again, it goes back to these open areas where they talk about the Jin living there and these other entities sort of like these elementals, right? Where there's little spirits or fairies or whatever you want to call it that According to Paracelsus, he said that these elementals, they come from wherever they are. So if they come from the ground, they're ground, you know, it's like the Pokemon, they're ground types. If they come from the air, they're, they're air type, et cetera, water types, all these other things. But this guy seems like he's having either a severe, and this started recently or has this been happening for a yeah, lot of years? This started recently, man. This started, I think the first experience only started last year and it's accelerated and he's it just continues to get stranger and stranger. And you were talking about the energy, man, the energy in that whole state. I don't know if it's the entire state, but especially in the Southern region where, when you get to the more Southern most areas and the swamps, <clears throat> that's the main reason. One of the main reasons I had to get out of there. I think it, tra- it's, it it's so powerful. It's totally dark and dense Once you cross even a certain line, when you're going down south, I can feel it just overcome me. This like dark, dense energy. It feels like you're heavier and it's not just the humidity. It's, it's something far, it's, 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 it's something you can't even describe. And I think it's the reason why I was depressed, why a lot of my friends, now this is a staggering number. I've had, I think like 10 to 12 friends commit suicide growing up. Uh, uh, whenever from my teenage years up into my twenties, it just, it has an effect on people. I've had so many of my friends succumb to extreme drug use and overdoses. And like I said, suicides, they become very depressed. They feel like they're stuck in that state. Like they can't leave for some reason. And the, there is very limited creative nurturing, if you know what I mean, in that state. If you want to make a shit ton of money by being away from your family for months at a time on an oil rig in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, hey, you know, more power to you. You'd make a shit ton of money, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, feed your family and, and watch the football on the weekends and have a great normal life. But as far as anything else, you know, there's not much that can – nurture that creative side of people especially like myself i was a very creative person and it tended to have this draining effect on me and as soon as i left there like that's when forbidden knowledge news took off that's when my life got better that's when everything started getting better for me and i told you about that first contact experience one of the main things they were telling me was to get the hell out of that state because it was draining me it, do you think because when a lot of people think of New Orleans, for example, I, for one, think of like black magic, voodoo, etc., mm-hmm. right? Dark occult. 
And do you think that that's perhaps what's happening? It's not on the 33rd. I mean, it's on the 20 New Orleans at least is on the 29th parallel. But do you think it's maybe by design that because I do believe that like right these world grids. I, I remember I went on your show and I talked about the parallels and the world grid that I I believe that the elites tap into, and they're able to manipulate the energy. Not only that, but these grids also serve as portals for these other entities on the other side to come through as well. Do you think that maybe yeah, Louisiana? I, is I think there's that? a lot to that. There's there's the voodoo aspect. There's the occult ritualistic aspect. There is the slavery aspect. There's a huge, dense, dark aspect of history, a huge portion of history that's overshadowed by hist by that aspect of slavery. And then there's the lesser known aspect of the massive Native American population that was down there that was most likely subjected to some kind of genocide that we don't hear about. But more interesting part of history that we do know about is there were there were a various native tribes that settled there for over 10,000 years one of them being the Adena tribe also known as the mound builders and they had a series of massive mounds built throughout i say middle to northern louisiana very impressive mounds adorned with massive, impressive stone shell middens. And the construction was always, as, as usual, very advanced for some of these ancient peoples. And of course, the purposes of the mounds are still debated. Were they ceremonial? Were they for for burials? And some believe that they were even burying giant Nephilim uh, Native Americans in there or something like that. So that's another aspect of history that many people don't really talk about there. And I'd go as far because that's something that's overlooked. I mean, the indigenous populations that were wiped out, also the slave trade. And yeah. it seems like Louisiana is always hit with these hurricanes, right? Oh, God. And that's a recurring trauma, dude. Yes. Like, I, that's, I mean, that's one reason to get out of there. There's, they have people that's, that's, that are so stuck there. And, of course, there's people that love the culture and food there so much they don't want to leave. And their families are down there. But to, to be threatened every single year to lose your whole property and house to a massive storm or even die, you know, the possibility you may die in a storm every single year that has a chance of coming through – that doesn't seem like a, 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 a great place to thrive and be happy. And ever since, man, Katrina, they were still recovering from Katrina. And then Ida hit a couple of years ago and just wiped all kinds of other shit out in a, in a slightly different area. So Louisiana is still recovering from all that trauma mm. and all those storms. So that's another level of just darkness all over it. Hurricane Juan hit in 1985. It was a large mm -hmm. and erratic. So, yeah, I think that this has something to do with it. Now, in your research, where have you, what are the connections you've made with cryptids and the occult? Is there any connections there? Because I have my own <sighs> ideas regarding that. Well, they had the, the voodoo aspect. I mean, that could be one of the, the big aspects there. They have... They did have a um, a large hidden, what you would call, I guess, military industrial experimentation in some of those areas of the swamps. What I'm tr still trying to find out if he, any eyewitnesses or any more information, there's not much information going on there, but they're saying, you know, places like like Halliburton down there that were developing military industrial type things and a lot of hidden weaponry and things like that. There's that theory that maybe they had some sort of advanced experimentation going down there. I'm not sure the other, of course, the dark history of the slavery. I think that it's possible that the, the, the amount of ritualistic um, practices that were going on from not only voodoo, but there was there was many other previous cultures there that had pagan and occult ritualistic practices that they would utilize. Maybe they were opening portals of some sort. Uh, I don't know. I think that's that's one option though. 
but one of the one of the biggest most remembered characters that was involved with voodoo was Marie Laveau. And the the more I read and research about her, it seems that she might have had some, you know, magical and occult abilities, but it's more likely she she was very psychologically adept, intuitive. But even more than that, she was she seemed to be a spy on many levels, whether she was spying for somebody else, it's not sure, but she would definitely had her own network of lower level servants and people that were work for her that would get secrets from the elites and politicians of that area. And she used that to her advantage. She, she used that for blackmail purposes, congressmen, lawyers, bankers, they had slush funds tagged as Laveau expenses. So she was getting in there with some of those, she would, you know, begin spreading unsubstantiated uh, rumors about her powers and the powers of her pet snake and, and voodoo. But in reality, she was using some of these services to get trade secrets and it scared the shit out of people and she became very powerful that way so that's another interesting aspect too and i was looking because i could have swore that there was a connection between crowley and louisiana or that he was in louisiana at one point mm, interesting and, and he made but I, i'm looking it up i could be wrong because but there is a crowley louisiana like a crowley louisiana yes yes crowley, so, there is crowley louisiana because i'm I, not sure I could have swore I'm not sure if that has any um, connections, but that's interesting. I mean, the yeah, it is interesting. It's it says Crowley was founded by C.C. Dusen and W.W. Dusen or Dusen, so it doesn't have anything to do with Crowley. But I could have swore I read somewhere that he was somewhere near in Louisiana, and it could have been an H.P. Lovecraft story where there he was in contact with this entity named Tatulu. And this was decades before H.P. Lovecraft was in touch with or created his Cthulhu mythos. So mm. the idea being that there are these entities on the other side that are trying to come through and they manifest themselves through these arts that we cinema, writing, mm. movies, et cetera, et cetera. But they use people as some sort of vessel now. So, yeah, there is a Crowley, Louisiana. Coincidentally, yeah, I'm trying to find it here, but. My con my connection with the with the cryptids and the especially the dog man because the the con the difference between a dog man and whenever someone sees a dog man versus when they see a Bigfoot a dog man they're terrified they don't ever want to see it again they don't ever want to go back to wherever it was at. And a Bigfoot's kind of different. It's kind of friendly. Hey, how's it going, neighbor? Right? Good to see you. I want to go find you. I want to go find Bigfoot. You don't ever hear anybody, hey, I want to go find Dogman after they encounter one. Right. Yeah. And I think that maybe these entities are interdimensional or even better yet, what if the elites or, or somebody is using these entities as some sort of vessel for their consciousness where they can just jump in right like some altered carbon rick havoc do whatever have fun you know eat some people do it right the shenanigans <laughs> that werewolves do and then jump back into their own body and their consciousness or whatever it is back into their body and it's some Check sort of out. astral you... projection i don't know well i'm um, so interesting you said that have you do you familiar with tony merkel have you had him on <laughs> him and i he talk has... but i haven't had him on yet yeah, he has the confessional podcast, and he interviews people who experience weird shit. And there's a couple of things we talked about when it comes to the cryptid dog man type thing. One is he interviewed a gentleman who – this is a crazy long story. I can't get into the whole story. It's too insane and convoluted. But <clears throat> supposedly this there's a gentleman who is having – You're talking about the book, the, the secret the book? The book. Yeah, I've, I've heard it. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're caught up with that. Well, yeah. apparently this gentleman who was having these experiences in these different realms and meeting demons and all types of creatures, he apparently met a, a werewolf or a lycanthrope in this other realm, and the lycanthrope began to explain a little bit about himself and what he was doing, and he said that Bigfoots and uh, – and lycanthropes are the same types of sort of like the same types of entities. They are both lycanthropes. They both are shapeshifters. And 
at times, I find that interesting because at times Scott would say he would see Bigfoots that kind of looked like a mix between a dogman. He would be a Bigfoot, but he'd have a kind of elongated snout. And then vice versa, he'd see a dogman that would look a little bit more primate-like, a little bit more like a Bigfoot. So there seems to be some weird mix of DNA or something going on there. Another interesting thing is Scott says, and uh, Tony's uh, contact there says that there seems to be a level of subservience between the the, the Bigfoot it has a, a master-servant type of relationship with the dog man, the dog man is subservient like a pet dog to the Bigfoot in some ways, which is very interesting because Scott says that he's been communicated some of the same things about those creatures. So have you I seen don't know. That? Have you heard that? meme? was like, can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Have you heard that meme before? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. So I found the connection it was HP Lovecraft and he wrote wow. about a cult of Cthulhu that was in Louisiana. So mm. you have H.P. Lovecraft and the connection to Louisiana. Now, in alchemy, I talked about the homunculus on your show before. And mm. the reason I asked whether Dogman was packing or not is because in the Liber Vacay, which is this grimoire, and a grimoire is a book of magical procedures or experiments, I think the, I know where you're going with this. Yeah. I think we talked about this. Yeah. You know where I'm going. And one of the one of the recipes was acquire the biggest dog penis you can <laughs> find and beat yes. a cow carcass with it in order to create. I mean, in this particular one was to create bees. But even bees are weird as fuck because I just had Chaz the <laughs> Dead on. And we made all these crazy connections with the bees, right? The bees are going extinct. But then the bees are linked to the UFO phenomenon and lights in the sky. So it's like this uh. weird connection. But... That's why I asked, is he packing? Because the one thing, what if these grimoires are talking about acquiring like a dog man's penis and like a lycanthrope? Because the the phenomenon of uh, lycanthropes goes back into into history, far back in history. It's not just recent, right? So, and what if it, because I've heard it put, what if it was, it was a state of mind. It was people would experience hysteria and they would go mad, right? But what if it was an actual biological change, sort of like a Kundalini awakening, except it was something other? Because d dog spelt backwards is God, and dog's a man's best friend, right? And also, I've connected the dog aspect that with occultist Kenneth Grant. Kenneth Grant talks about that the. The souls of the damned, and I'm paraphrasing here because I'm, I'm going to be doing a whole episode on this. The souls of the damned are reincarnated as dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Back again as dogs. The fool is staring into the abyss. And what's always at his side that's always staring into the abyss with him? The dog. Yeah, the dog. Right? Yeah. The dog is there with him. And he they're, they're, they're staring at the, right, Kether. They're staring into the one, into the oneness, into the abyss. And this is, I think, why a lot of a lot of occultists like Crowley and all these other guys that were crossing the abyss were obsessed with this. And it was about, dude, it was, it was, it's weird because it's about going back in time into a state of pre-human civilization. And, and, and he calls it a larval life form, a larval life form. So like a larva. And yeah. I made this connection with the Poopa universe of that show. I forgot. I did an episode of Donut where we went to the Poopa reality, which like, what if we're our larva? Like Grant Morrison was talking about when he was abducted by these ETs and he was shown the the real reality and that we are some larva that are being harvested by these higher entities in this other realm. Like, oh. again, dude, and, and Carl, <laughs> Carl Jung, Carl Jung, because he was doing alchemy, right? It all goes back to alchemy and the transfer of consciousness. Well, Carl Jung, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up here. He was doing these inner workings or path working, whatever you want to call it, where he was looking into his inner self, into the fabric of existence through the use of writing. And he was able to interact with these other entities on the other side through the use of writing he would have a journal and whenever he would start to acknowledge and write about these entities he was able to interact with them but one of his first mandalas that he ever painted when i heard grant morrison talking about his abduction story his psychedelic trip whatever and that we are larva well i'm looking at a scholar here that that painted 
right? Reality. And this is a mandala that was painted by Carl Jung, I think, in 1912 or something or other, 1914. Of course, mm. we have the Gnostic Demiurge here, which kind of looks like a parasite of some sort, right? Some <laughs> sort of worm entity. And this is mundane reality. This is mundane existence. This is what we can mm. perceive, right? So mundus exterior, may, uh, mayor, right? So, but then if you look further in, right, towards the tree of life of Vita right here, we have these larva looking things look at this yes so again i'm this is something i'm working on and uh, I, I, I i might be onto something but i think that oh. i don't know it's just a weird sync just a weird Dude, if connection. i wake up one day and i'm a like <laughs> slivering larva just <laughs> slapping around somewhere i'm gonna be pissed dude i tell you what well it, i mean again don't go too far because if you if we look at the movies like right the one that I wrote, the matrix yeah, he's course, in yeah. some sort of cocoon like some sort of yeah. metamorphosis he was gr he was a homunculus an artificially created man for one purpose and they were mining they were using them for for computational power or mining for their energy whatever it was but they're in these pods again yeah. maybe it's not that we're these these little larva but like maybe we're what's inside of that larva who like who knows bro i mean that just I'm just trying to think outside the box, man. And like yeah. one of the things that these occultists do is in one of these alternate dimensions, they jump in it and time goes backwards. So when they're reversed in time, they go back to that anti pre-human civilization, which they call a larval life form. And when they're not able to stop the reversal of time, they are knocked into the abyss by the crocodile headed dog and it's he's got a name but it goes back to the egyptian mythology where it's the crocodile headed god that knocks them off into the abyss when they're struggling and they can't come back so i think this is why a lot of occultists lose their minds quite literally and maybe yeah. that's the lycanthrope bro maybe that is another form of lycanthrope where you lose your mind because you were trying to do some occult shit trying to cross the abyss so that's crazy again bro I'm just I'm just here to make connections. Man. I'm, just, I'm uh, let's get weird. You know what I'm saying? Like let's 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 go above yeah, and beyond. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Well, you said the crocodile head. Scott has also. I don't know if he's seen it, but he has talked to witnesses that have seen a a crocodile man in the swamp, a lizard man, various different reptilian creatures that reptilian humanoid creatures that slither in the the bayous and swamps. And man, whenever you, you look at all the, the accounts of this high strangeness, it seems like, okay, so you, you think of, of the possibility if we are some kind of larva. Well, we're definitely something that is far more inferior to the abilities that these whatever these beings are even the seemingly some of the most primitive like big man or bigfoot or, or dog man have some incredible consciousness abilities if they are what they appear to be and if if people are really having these experiences well scott's experiences this this kind of goes to what if there's something incredibly more to all of this and it's all connected and we are we're just subjects to extreme high intelligences that are interdimensional beings just beyond the spectrum of our vision that can do whatever they want with us at their will. Scott starts having missing time experiences. He starts waking up and having these insane memories of being led through catacombs and he would look to his right and he'd see a seven or eight fall eight foot tall insectoid being what he would describe as a praying mantis and then he would look to the other side and it would be a seven eight tall classic gray extraterrestrial leading him somewhere into this deep cave or catacomb and towards the end of the catacomb, there was a massive Bigfoot waiting for them to open a door. And when he gets in there, he says he has memories of being downloaded or taught to he, what he can only describe as fight in these astral or dreamlike states. And he'd have a bunch of missing time, and then he'd wake up the next morning and have these memories of these these creatures. So there's there could be something, too, that we are at the... At, 
the beckoning hands of whatever this these things are are this grand intelligence possibly i'm trying to find here the excerpt where he talks about it being another form of all right here i found it so such is the fate particular peculiar to adepts who nurturing their animal propensities while in the abyss assume the form of beasts so when they're doing this crossing of the abyss right Mm. this shadow work or whatever you want to call it and they're in these other dimensions crowley did this you have parsons did this all the greatest occultists did this and he calls it here this is the origin of the magical lycanthrope and similar occult phenomena so what if these what if these entities are these people right that are, that maybe are possessed by something else because another one it's something else of my research that kind of and i had sent the screenshot to to tony i had texted him one day and i'm, I'm supposed to be going on the confessionals sometime like whenever right it's gonna happen but the i had sent him something that one of my listeners pointed out on an episode that i did on a voyage to Cartesius, where it was about pretty much, it's talked about René Descartes. It was a book that we found from the 1600s that talked about René Descartes and his technology that he was able to transmit his consciousness and project his consciousness into these other worlds, right? Quite literally. And they were able to do their own thing in these astral realms and all this stuff. But one of the things was that relates to that, that secret book where whenever they would ask him, hey, you know, where's our friend? He's like, hey, he'll be right back. You know, he's somewhere else. Yeah. He's not here right now. Well, in this in this book, A Voyage, the, the Voyage to the World of Cartesius from 1694, written by this weird guy with two first names that we can't really find any information on. They talk about that when you are in the astral realm, when you project your consciousness after inhaling this this concoction of tobacco and what we've came to the conclusion dmt or something mm -hmm. and you project your consciousness you are assigned or you call you you bring forth a watcher now the watchers is is a is a term that a lot of people use in, in the biblical sense right the watchers i've heard that the watchers are they're watching the divine alchemist or the divine architecture architect, the master mason, whatever you want to call it, however Freemasonic you want to get. They're watching him create and unravel reality real time. Right. Mm. And then I've also heard of the watchers like in the Picatrix Grimoric sense that it's the watchers that watch over your body while your consciousness is in another realm. And in this particular book, they describe this watcher as a black humanoid as a black they called it a, a small moor looking person right so we call it the black homunculi that literally takes over your body and is able to do just the bare minimum right just the bare minimum wash your mouth it'll brush your teeth it'll have <laughs> you eat just to keep this vessel this this shell this husk alive while you're in this other realm but I think we got a lot of people that are inhabited by that anyway, right? So, now. <laughs> well, that one of the one of the rules that you're not supposed to break when you're out of your body is that NPC or whatever it is uh -huh. cannot have deep conversations. One of the things uh -huh. you can't do with it is have a deep conversation. So when you start to have a deep conversation with it, it'll like loop out and it's like, hey, I can't compute. So <laughs> there is there is. I don't know if you've seen the show Peripheral on Amazon Prime. It's kind of sort of like this. It's like a world aligned with our world. And then when the people are in the real world that we perceive now, uh, in the other world, they're taken over by what they call a thumb or something like that. And again, it's this automatous thing that takes over and it'll just sit there and eat and do the bare minimum for the person. But here's the, here's the crazy part, bro. That sometimes when you call forth this watcher, and you go and you project your consciousness out and you come back to get back in your body sometimes that black little homunculus goes mm -mm, i'm not getting out yeah. this is mine now and your soul or whatever it is is stuck out in this other i think that's what space is bro i think that's what space isn't what they've told us it really is i think that space and the reason that it's, the the concept exists is because of these occultists bro 
because space represents something for them that's like unattainable and it, it, i think it represents the 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 layers of reality which you're able to comprehend and conceive and, and understand because if we think about the gnostics how they believe that every celestial orbit was a different dimension of a different demon they were mm. wiped out bro they were they were killed right and they, they were never talked about ever again right christianity wow. as we know it today what what a, pick a, a, the 44,000 domina dominations pick your pick your pick whatever one you want to go with but again these concepts when you start to put them together you go okay something's going on here but when i think of the story of tony merkel where they're like oh hey your friend's not here right now he'll be back well what if that was like this little black homunculus that's in the driver's seat like in men in black or right? when his face opens up and it's like a little alien well what if that was what was in the vessel essentially right as yeah. his friend was in this other realm this this watery light that we see in like shows like stranger things or something like that man i don't know that's crazy dude i tell you what though recently i've come across some information i'm having a guest on in a couple of i think it was next next month have you heard of robert guffey in the book camellio Yes, I have actually. Yes. Okay. So shit like that. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll briefly kind of describe what happened. It's about a heroin addict that supposedly stole or he was accused of stealing highly advanced military industrial or some kind of goggles. Okay. So he was, he became the subject of illegal, uh, dark surveillance and harassment from these shadowy groups three letters and beyond trying to get him to either get back the goggles or admit well this keep in mind this takes place in the 90s okay and this dude starts experiencing things like a paranormal activity in his house but he also to to he also ex starts seeing like things moving like, like I was telling you in Scott's house he would see the shimmery things and he would see he would hear disembodied voices well it turns out that the, these groups were like beaming in frequencies into his house to make him hallucinate they were making him see like planets and things outside of his windows that weren't there making him hear voices he they were even going as far as making him hallucinate abduction experiences and alien contact experiences and all this elaborate stuff they'd send in advanced drones to his house to look like ufos going around the outside of his house just driving him insane and he had the confirmation for many times that these people were doing this because they'd periodically check in with him and be like, okay, are you ready to give up this information yet? Are you ready to come clean? Are you ready to give us our shit back? And he'd be like, no, I know what you guys are doing. I never did anything. So very interesting book, Camellio, Robert Guffey's coming on in, in I think next month to, t to talk about it. But that makes me think of how much of the high strange shit that we at interact with could be some sort of black project if they, if they had that kind of advanced technology in the 90s to to be able to cause someone to believe that type of thing was happening and if they wanted to do that nowadays how advanced you know is that stuff how how much of what people are experiencing as ufo and contact experiences is really unexplained or otherworldly or non-human could it be us just trying to mm. fuck with people is it is it us <laughs> trying to establish a ufo narrative globally i mean what's happening now within the mainstream everywhere they're pushing ufos and saying that aliens are real and getting this into the the mass consciousness well could it be some sort of mass black operation that's what a lot of this the subject of a lot of mk ultra experiments were to get people to have delusions that they've had experiences, grand experiences that didn't really happen and cause all kinds of hallucinations up into including paranormal activity and psychosis. I don't know, man. That just makes me think, and it, it makes me, uh, I, I would think that that is more disturbing than actual real paranormal activity to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. But here's, I stand on two sides because I had this conversation yesterday with Chaz where it's like, what, where do you draw the line? Is it cultural? Is it biological? Is it something else? Right. Is it an actual phenomenon? Yeah. Like there's all these layers of reality. Now 
I would agree with what you're saying because if you think of like, for example, Crowley or really any occultist, how you, you mentioned one that was a spy, right? The spy. And it always seems like occultists and occultism is linked with spies, right? You have John D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the elites always have their court astrologer or somebody. They talked about there's a theory that William Shakespeare was also a spy during the Renaissance era. There is all these guys. They were all spies, right? For, for either Rudolph. In Prague, like there were, there were all spies. Now, I brought up the idea, like, hey, Crowley, he kind of showed us that, hey, we can, we can all tap into this, this force, this thing through sexual magic or whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, through sex magic, but then he also had government and three-letter agency connections as well. If you want to believe him, Helena mm. Blavatsky. As well, some shady connection. So what if this connection maybe in the new, the newer world, the newer time is some sort of psyop that they're trying to push on us. And because I've seen the, the community kind of flip flop, like I've seen oh, there's there's actual entities. And now it's like, oh, it's a psyop. It's Project Bluebeam, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But then because we have Crowley, he was in touch with Lamb and in touch with Iowa's, like with the, these otherworldly entities, Tatulu as well. But then what about before all the three letter agencies, Chris? What about all these these stories? The mm -hmm. what's the one fame the famous witch that that is it the Bell Witch or something or other, where she would transform and shape shift and all this stuff? What about all those stories before the government and before Skinwalker Ranch and before all these other places and even tribal lore, right, of, of the indigenous people. That yeah. sounds like paranormal activity. You oh, 100%. I mean? Yeah, and there's there's also a fine line between what we consider technology and unexplained paranormal activity and magic. And it's always possible that we always had these advanced forms of interacting and manipulating the world around us and in, in, in what we would understand as magic and ways to do this that could just be a, eventually we'll understand it as a form of science or of technology but you're right there's stuff that's way older than anything that we have manufactured in our 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 modern days that our military industrial complex could have ever dreamed up. And especially in places like Louisiana, when we're, especially when you're talking about some of the native history and the, the, the voodoo and paranormal history and all of that. And to the fact that there is a distinct effort to attempt to cover some of this stuff up. I mean, I don't think that they would be trying to get us to look the other way if this stuff really wasn't happening and they were concerned about it, they have what I and what is understood as like Bigfoot men in black. They've got these guys that come around. I understand they've had. So what'd you say, Chris? <laughs> so there, there's these Bigfoot men in black. They're uh, <laughs> like, uh, the, like the regular men in black, but they come around when people have Bigfoot sightings. So I've interviewed a couple of individuals. Oh, I thought you meant the men in black were a Bigfoot I'm, or Big Feet. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. Right, the Bigfoot right. men in black, the guys who come around to cover up the, the evidence okay. of the Bigfoot. Okay. So cool. I've interviewed a couple of people that claim to have experiences with Bigfoots and interactions and, like Scott, psychic communication. Some of these individuals claim that whenever a Bigfoot body is found, that immediately – these men in black, this this shadowy group will come and pick up the body so there's no evidence found. <laughs> I've heard they they go as far as even to to search for massive Bigfoot shits in the woods and try and cover that up. I find that to be kind of ridiculous, but, you know, anything's possible. But especially if people have experiences, supposedly these, like, lumberjack-looking kind of even redneck dudes show up at times and they'd be like, you didn't see nothing. And they're very intimidating and they cover up any type of evidence or footprints that's visible. And they try to keep the big, you saw a dog. Talk that's what that's you right. Saw. You that's saw, all you saw. You saw St. Bernard. <laughs> it was a big St. Bernard. That's all you saw. And that's it. You <laughs> exactly. got it, bub? <laughs> Yeah, that's funny, man. I don't know about any of that stuff, but it's it's interesting to think about. And why not? Well, if they have the Men in Black for the paranormal and alien stuff, why wouldn't it be for 
for Bigfoots because it seems to have pronou- uh, pr- uh, profound connections to some of what we consider as possibly extraterrestrials. One of the one of the craziest experiences that that Scott had besides the Bigfoots was he was out in the middle of the swamps, sitting in his truck with a couple of friends. He had witnesses to this, and he he said he just had a feeling something was going to happen. Something to go, told him to go sit out there, and he says he claims that a, a light beam shot down from the sky. A portal opened up and seven or eight foot tall translucent light beings. That's all he described them as is they were just translucent, very bright bluish light beings stepped out of the portal and started walking down a hillside until they were out of view. And they were just walking intently like they had something to do. Didn't even notice Scott in the truck or anything like that and just walked out of view. And the, the light beam shot back up out of the sky and you know, just another day for Scott with his uh, with his crazy experiences. So there's something going on with there's something much more metaphysical than just hairy hominids or physical dog creatures or something like that. All right, Chris. So uh, you've interviewed more people than I have on the paranormal, right? Because if these entities are as smart as they are. Don't you think that they would pick some other coordinates to not spawn in front of a group of people? Like, like, oh shit, I hit the button accidentally. The portal's opening up. Like the other guy, the, the guy, the guy that was operating the portal gun or whatever it was, the portal ray. <laughs> he acted, his fingers slipped, and all those, oh, there was people there, dude. I didn't. I was like, oh well, we didn't see him. Don't you think that they would be a little bit smarter as to? And, and you know, and why the places that, they, that that's that's one of the things about how are you able to identify? I mean, from your experience, Chris, when when someone's full of shit, like when 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 uh, this oh, is like man. a story, because stories are yeah. cool, right? Stories are nice. yeah, stories are cool. This guy, I mean, if you can sit down and look into his eyes and have a conversation with him and his wife, and he's in his mid fifties, and before this shit happened, he didn't care about any of this stuff. He didn't know anything about a dog man or aliens or anything. He's he considers himself a church going Catholic, and I, I have an eye for 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 bullshit when, especially since a lot of the past guests I had, I considered to to be full of shit. You know, I. I I've had many, many, many people <laughs> on in the past that have not made a second appearance on the show. I'll tell you that much. But yeah, I think Scott is extremely genuine. And I think what he's, he's, he truly believes his experiences. And that's another thing. I've had a lot of guests that truly believe their experiences, whether I believe they're bullshit, whether someone else believes they're bullshit. I don't think it matters. They truly believe this happened to them. And in their world, it did happen to them. And that's where we have to be very discerning with a lot of this stuff is people's personal experiences. I had an incredible personal encounters, unexplained experiences with a reptilian chasing me around my house. So, you know, these these things have to be taken by case by case. And they, and I think that you have to be extremely discerning on the information that's coming out and who's saying it. And there's probably many factors, but I think that this gentleman is, is very genuine. And I think a lot of the stuff he's saying, if it's, you know, may not be true in whatever fashion you believe, but he believes it a hundred percent. And that's what keeps me going back to these accounts and makes me very interested in his story overall. So yeah, I think that he's, uh, he's a great witness to, to have when it comes to a variety of these, these experiences. Yeah. And it's, to the to the aspect of it was Eric from the uncomfortable podcast he had that that witch on that supposedly was ha- was having these big feet I'm gonna call them big feet for plural she would have these entities and they would mm. be kind of sort of like her familiar do you ever listen to that episode the, the I did not know so dude it's like one of his biggest episodes and he even went on on M- Merkel's show to talk about it. And it was this story of a witch that he went to go visit and she was able to call upon the, the big feet, the Bigfoot, Right. And, and they were, they, she would, I forgot what she called them, but she was like friendly with them and all this stuff. And they would, they would always be on the very edge of, you know, when 
these movies that you see where these entities are always at the very edge of where the light is and you can't really pin you've heard those stories where people can't really see them because they're right where where the light ends and they can't they're kind of sort of there <laughs> yeah. but yeah yeah and it was like that whenever he would go outside it was like they were there but not really like they were standing enough to where and again i mean that that's one of the, that's related to the occult of familiar a witch is familiar can be any animal and that wouldn't that wouldn't exclude some sort of chimera that was alchemically made somewhere, right? This and maybe what if the because I don't know if you've ever read the the book of werewolves by Sabine Baring Gould, where he talks about how some people are able to jump into these shells, these husks of werewolves. But then it's like, are these werewolf bodies just sitting around somewhere? And then until like a like a Gundam and somebody activates it, right? It's like that would mean that there's werewolf everywhere, but then you don't see. You know what I'm saying? Like some werewolf slumped over somewhere, like some car- <laughs> altered carbon. But yeah. the idea that you're able to tap into these entities or whatever they are and use them as familiars for your magical practices or occult practices, right? Um, yeah. Because he kind of what you were talking about. I've also heard that one guy that Merkel had on with the with the, with the LBL. I forget what they called it, but that crazy story at the LBL, which I mean, the LBL has a whole bunch of craziness that goes on to it, right? The land between the lakes and how he talked about how when he encountered the dog, man, there was also a Bigfoot with it. And, but have you noticed, Chris, before any of this? And dude, when I was in elementary school, I was reading about UFOs, right? I remember the book fairs that they would have at school, right? And and they would have all the weird section with all the... the and I'd always either buy the Bermuda Triangle or or something about Bigfoot, and Dogman never really came up. And then mm-hmm. Dogman, it feels like, has jumped into the scene as of recently. And yeah. then I don't know where people are like, oh yeah, they were together, bro. The <laughs> Bigfoot is the good guy, and the other guy is like kind of mean, right? They're playing Man. like good cop, bad cop now. <laughs> are we having some kind of collective egregore type experience where we're creating our own dogmen and manifesting into our reality? Or what did Carl possible? Jung say about UFO phenomenon that it's the yeah. collective conscious per- yeah. projecting it? And then again, it goes back to what Chaz and I were talking about yesterday about where do you draw the line? Where where is too far? What is real? What is not? And what if it is like this sort of aragoric energy that just manifests itself? And it's just the darkest, deepest, blackest stuff of, you know, like the psyche of humanity of that area or whatever it is. That's just yeah, able to manifest itself into that entity. And it's just, again, dog spelled backwards is God. So uh, I don't I don't know. And there's such a fine line that some of this stuff, is it paranormal or is it something natural mm-hmm. that we don't understand? Tony was also telling me a story about an account. He had a a couple of gentlemen that are from Louisiana, and this was right after or not that far after Hurricane Ida. And they they were in a boat going through some of these swampy channels, and a new channel had opened up because of the storm. It opened up a new pathway, and they were exploring in some longtime uncharted areas, and supposedly... They see what they can only describe as a 15 to 20 foot tall man, not a hairy man, not a Bigfoot, a 15 to 20 foot tall man peeking behind some of the trees and looking at them very like timidly and then just kind of going slumping back into the wood. And they said they just took off out of there because they were terrified. But dude, if they got 15 to 20 foot tall giants out in them Louisiana swamps too, I got to go back on a second expedition. (laughs) Again, they didn't say if he was packing or not. You see, we need to report the facts, Chris. I think you need to go back and find out. The most important thing I need to find out next time is, are they packing? Yeah, and what are their pronouns? She, her, (laughs) they, them, whatever it is, you know. And I recently listened to the story of the giant of, is it Kaldahar or whatever? Yeah, Kaldahar. Kaldahar, yeah. I never heard that story before until oh that's yeah that's until recently. One. But that's the thing, man. Like if these things were actually in in the wild for real, don't you think? I mean, there are open areas where there's no civilization for miles and miles. But you think that you'd see one somewhere? You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, man. Like some kaiju or something like Pacific. But Rim. although, have you just traveled across the state recently? Have you gone like say from? 
Colorado to California and seen the vast emptiness in some of the areas of this great country. I mean, there's there's areas that I'm not saying that they've been unexplored, but there are mm-hmm. very rarely explored areas. Like we may have come through some of these areas at one point in our history and said, this is a shithole and just never gone back <laughs> there again. And that's the place where all the other creatures go because they know we consider it a shithole, but they say it's home. And it could be, you know, miles from civilization. And if these beings have been surviving out of our realization and, and away from from humanity for so long and and being able to stay so elusive maybe they do have some sort of consciousness abilities that we don't understand i like to consider some of these things as like sorcerers of the the wilderness or forest and they they may have lost abilities that we've lost because we're around you know the 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 frequency soup all day and the the 5g and we're eating crappy shitty food and Mm -hmm. we're being hypnotized by media all day so of course we're losing our ability to perceive and our the consciousness abilities we have but if we if those creatures maybe managed to hold on to some of that i mean most of the reports of these high strange cryptids are in very rural areas anyway so Man, I don't know. I, I'll, I, I will tell you that Ryan Burns contacted me today with some crazy stuff that he's probably <laughs> so probably going to be going around and talking about did, soon. Do you have his number? Does his number start with an eight zero one? I'll have to check. I don't have. I don't have it near me. Because I think I got but, a text dude, from him, but I don't think it's it's. I don't know. I'll tell you this. I think they summon a Dementor. <laughs> he showed he showed me a picture of something. Yeah, insane, I got the bro. I got the picture, but I didn't know he had my phone number. Yeah. So that's 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 the weird part. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he's working with aerospace companies and who knows else. So he he's probably got everybody's number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I I agree with you, but yeah, I did. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about, and and yeah. right, it's guys like Ryan. Right, shout out to Ryan Burns that are yeah. pushing the envelope, and this is why it goes back to this idea that. This technology, maybe it's what you're saying, Chris. Maybe it's not a cult or paranormal, and it's a sort of tech. And it's mm. a tech that the elites know about that they're able to tap into, and they they use it. They And I always go back, because that book, Camilio, it was Ryan Burns, actually, the one that showed it to me, and I he was the one that introduced yeah. it to me. And the idea, I always re- reference, because the way Ryan said this to me at one time on a podcast, that blew my mind. But he talks about, he goes, yeah, a lot of these movies, well, it's Hollywood unveiling the newest technology that they got from the ETs, man. Right. Yeah, and then yeah. you think of James Cameron and him not having the technology to shoot Avatar, the newest Avatar. He had to create the tech. How, bro, what? Mm. You had a, you wanted <laughs> to shoot this movie, but you didn't have the technology for it. Are we back in yeah. right about the moon landing? Is, did you see the, yeah. the the latest Russia's about to 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 unveil right the the U.S. never went to the moon? It's like, bro, we know, like we know yeah. that they didn't go. Did you see that? No, report? I didn't hear that Russia. No, yeah, I missed that one. It was I saw why well, I, I saw it on Twitter, so it's got to be true. But there was something <laughs> about that Russia was about to reveal that uh, the the secrets right it never happened. They have no evidence that they ever made it to the moon. But it's like. They're proving stuff that we've been talking about yeah, for years. Yeah, right, right on. Right? We've been talking about this for years. So when yeah. they prove it, it's like, okay, well, what's next? Tell us something that we don't know. These conspiracy theories, they're truths. A lot, a lot of them are truths, man. I mean, you can't, there's no There's no way around it. But yeah, Ryan yeah. really blew my mind when he when he started talking about that concept. Because whenever you talk to Ryan, he's kind of cryptic and kind of weird when, with his wording, right? And yeah. you got to kind of have to pull it out of him. And one time we had him on. And he was talking about like, yeah, dude, it's not these tech. It's yeah, they get this tech and they make a movie with it. Yeah, sure. And they put it right yeah. out in front of your face. Boom. Right on. And they they're using the tech that they got from. And then if you look at, you know, James Cameron, he went to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. He was the he was one of the first ones to see the Titanic, wasn't he? Like he was one of the first ones to get the yeah. footage of the Titanic. <laughs> what a weird guy. What do I, I know, man? And I think that a lot of the answers too lie at the bottom of our oceans, man. I, I think that. Right, you had Ghislaine or Ghislaine, whoever you want to say it, and she was involved with this Terra Mar Corporation. She had a submarines license. She had, a, she 
other wealthy people also had submarine licenses. So it's like when Mark from my family thinks I'm crazy brought that up one time on a podcast. I was like, oh, dude, they're, ta- oh, they're tapping into It also other makes dimensions. me think of like Gene Roddenberry summoning the nine and putting that into the, the Star Trek uh, series and shit. Yeah, it's almost like some that? Ashtar Galactic Command. The, I've heard about the nine. I don't know a lot about them, but it's like these entities that are that are supposedly disembodied entities that were being channeled that were supposedly they posed as the gods of Egypt and they posed as gods throughout time and there were these highly advanced disembodied non-corporeal entities that had been uh, interfering in human affairs throughout history and giving us knowledge and <laughs> that Roddenberry would go to meetings where at seances where they would channel these beings, and that's where he got inspiration for Star Trek and all kinds of crazy shit, dude. So this Hollywood and like this this fringe reality has been intertwined since since the beginning. They're, you're right. I think they're just showing us the shit, you know. Not only that, though, but if you go back to again back to Carl Jung, where he talked about writing these experiences down sort of solidifies. I call it interdimensional literature where there's books. I mean, if you look at the Bible, it quite literally has shifted paradigms and it, it, it's it's people live around the doctrines that are in these books. Not saying that it's a bad thing, but they shift humanity. There are entire groups of people, congregations of people who believe in these books. What legitimacy? And a lot bro, and a lot of them, let's 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 be clear. A lot of them come from divine intervention, right? Mm. This prophet had a vision from God and he was told right here are the 10 tablets, bro. He was tapping into the OG cloud and he's going to come down from that mountain and you're going to follow these 10 commandments or whatever it is. And you're going to do what, you know what I'm saying? Like these different things. She was visited by an angel. I was like, yo, you're pregnant now with the Messiah, bro. Yo. (laughs) Yo, that's wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you imagine? That's crazy, bro. Like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, you have the son of God inside of you right now. Like, what? That's crazy, bro. Are you serious? Like, yeah, you're serious. So, but people will accept that, but then they won't accept stories of Dogman or Bigfoot or a, a Dogman having Bigfoot, right? Like, as a pet or whatever it is. But they'll believe these ancient texts of, again, divine, a lot of, are the religions that we know today were inspired through contact with these otherworldly entities, these things outside of space and time, if you will. And again, I don't know. Mm. I mean, I, I want to believe that there is something controlling this simulation, reality construct, whatever you want to call it. And they're kind of just, this is like some sort of zoological experiment or something, dude, like in the book of Enoch where, you know, every, oh. everybody's like at the Truman show. Or like you said, it's, it's programmable reality. If this is some sort of, I hate to say simulated reality, I think that's way too simplified mm-hmm. to put what we're in. But what if it is some sort of program that our avatars are here having an experience? Maybe we have an essence or our consciousness outside of this that is somewhat has control over these like a video game you know but we're we're not on the right path or we need to be shown something so why not press a b start select and send us a paranormal experience or a highly spiritual encounter that changes our perspective or terrifies us or sends us on a different path or just does it because we want to fuck with ourselves or whatever's controlling this simulation wants to fuck with us mm-hmm. you know maybe we are just the the worm pods and <laughs> the the simulation the, is control of these things i don't it's fun to consider though the pupa reality bro it's the the pupa or pupa <laughs> reality where it's like oh that's so disturbing man well if you think because i have nightmares about that shit in the show bro in the show here's this is the weirdest part about the show donut put me on this in the show this little larva thing has all the dna of like this advanced race and it's like this little harmless little larva that's gonna grow up to swallow the entire world so it's like dude, it's like that black mirror episode where the guy was having these projections but he was really in this like reality where this giant spider was holding him in a cocoon and projecting these different realities into his mind to make him think that he was living his life but in reality he was being slowly devoured by a giant spider that was sucking his blood 
Yeah, and they're they're actually coming out with a new season of Black Mirror, so I'm gonna have to rewatch the yeah. old ones to catch up and, and refresh. But yeah, dude, I don't know, man. I think that I think Chris, I I don't know if we're gonna, ever gonna find out. Yeah. About the true nature of reality, but I'll tell you something, man. I'm not talking a Bigfoot telepathically or Dogman telepathically, and and who knows? Would you want to have that experience? If if it, Chris, you know, last question. If they said, "Hey, man, you know, you can, you can, you, we'll let you meet Bigfoot. You can have a conversation with him, but you got to give up a little bit of piece, a little piece of your soul, bro. Just a little piece." Like twenty five. No man, I, I, I'm not giving up my soul. Anything, anything I do will be done within my own. Uh, I guess you could say within my own moral perspective. I do things. In, I have my own compass, and I do things that are in accordance with I, what I consider the light side or the benevolent side of the spiritual realms, and I don't mess with that dark stuff. So I don't go looking for anything, but. I, I am not afraid to experience anything, and I welcome new experiences that will expand my mind, but nothing nefarious. I do not welcome or go seeking any type of dark entities or dark experiences. But if it does happen, I believe I have enough spiritual protection to be able to endure things like that. So mm. that's where I'm at with it. Awesome. Yeah, and I agree with you. I'm not an occultist by any means, but I like to research this phenomenon. And the deeper you dive, the less answers it seems like you have and the more questions. So Well, even researching it, man, it can bring stuff up and you want the more you the deeper you look, it can it can come looking at you. You know, you the saying you you stare into the abyss, it stares back. Sometimes it's unavoidable to get maybe somewhat on a some level involved in the metaphysical if you know what i mean mm -hmm. as of recently we were I, I was translating some some books some occult books if you will oh, and shit. yeah we use this interface on on we were i was taking the the latin and and translating it on chat gpt and chat gpt oh. was coming back with the translation and it was funny because chat gpt was like Hey, you know, this is very powerful knowledge. You got to be careful. You can't be this, this, the knowledge in this book is, is very powerful and you, and, and you need to use it. Why only the initiated were allowed to have this knowledge. And, and it's part of a project that I'm working okay. on that's coming out soon, very, very soon. So once that's out, people are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. But oh, yeah, again, I don't know, man. I don't know. And it's like you're saying, sometimes you go looking and they, and it looks back at you. <laughs> yes, dude, hundred percent. So, Chris, dude, I always have a great time with you, man. Fun conversations, yes. right? Can't take yourself too seriously. We're here to have a good time. We're here for a sure. good time, not a long time. Where can people find you, and uh, where can they look forward to finding that documentary as well? Yes, documentary. We're still hoping that we will, we will be able to find it on Amazon. Uh, we haven't gotten that far with it yet, but we will definitely keep people updated to stay updated on what's going on with everything. Our website is forbiddenknowledge.news. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're available on all podcast platforms, Rumble. Our premium content is on Rockfin and producing a documentary by myself with a budget of a podcaster, which if most of you know it, in the podcasting business is not lucrative unless you're Joe Rogan. I could use help if you would like to help with the production with a donation. You can go to supportfkn.com. Anything's greatly appreciated. And if you make a donation of $80 or more there, you get a one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour Q&A session with me. You get your name in the credits of every docuseries episode as well. If you want to help in any other way, you can email me, forbiddenknowledgenews at gmail.com. And Juan, thank you so much again for having me on. Always is an amazing time yeah for those that encounter bigfoot or dog man let us know shoot us an email let us know if he's got a big dick or not all right guys that's it make sure to <laughs> like comment subscribe right leave a five-star review whatever go support chris on his endeavors and tjojp.com as always everyone see you on the other side
Yo, through a pass, here we try to feed all to E. We the last of a dying breed. Cause in a greed leads a path to a broken heart. In this heart, it's deceit. Never spoke of this keeping us all apart. Us in the dark with no sense of our identity. The industry puts too much energy into imagery. So, what's the remedy? Bona fide, pure chemistry. Three different minds of one entity. Son, we run in this independently. Finna be the catch who bring rap back. It's dignity. By design, it's simply elementary. Mentally, we'll never. Never move on through negativity Cause with ability There comes a certain sense of responsibility You feeling me? Uh, so let them know Uh-huh Black on Kim Uh-huh Black on Kim from the beginning, always testing the rock mics. Excite all types, expose light through a mic device. Display with words, open the eyes of the disturbed. One step away from death or life, never concerned. It's all about yourself and the next man. Must understand in God's plan to walk hand in hand. I know about the long road that tests your soul. It's mind over matter, crap out, you sure to fall. Exposed to the end of days, the wicked ways people pay. Karma's a bitch, so never play. So yo, at night when I pray, I pray for love, peace, and prosperity. And a little clarity, cause apparently There's no one thinking coherently Everybody's running amok, don't give a fuck So we stuck, but I still try Still high, still struggle till the day I die Uh-huh, I know you feel it Constantly fighting a higher spirit Utilize your mind, you'll find that you can clear it You can't fear it, you gotta drive when you steer it Only reason I'm living, cause I'm live with the lyrics So what's the difference between me and you? It's that I put my heart and soul in the things I do True I thought you knew. Listen up, people, all you gotta do. Uh huh. Black or kill. Uh huh. Black or kill. Hey yo, I'm not a baller. I gotta work hard for every dollar. Doing a nine to five plus I rhyme on the side. I wanna holler so I can keep it live for my people. Ain't no reason to lie, yo. We strive through this evil. At times it gets under my skin like a needle To the point I wanna beat you into a fetal position Cause y'all don't listen You wanna battle but I ain't your opposition I'm on a mission To break bread, play and make it for fun While these other cats fake it, try to take it and run I get it done One nine out of ten of y'all play dumb Ness, I be the one who's as slick as they come Yo, the scenario's this Your mind blitz from these so-called scholars Who quote unquote think they spitting knowledge The fact of the matter We came to shatter all fakeness Real cats off of greenback Never mistake it Take it in love Or we take it in blood Either way it ain't gon' matter Cause we taking them gloves off We step soft And carry a big stick All to E This is it And we came to represent Like this So clear the way And just Uh-huh Like a king Uh-huh